If you ever wondered how soy, how weak, how absolutely beta the individuals in the modern game development scene are, then just know that yesterday, 50 game developers at the GDC got together to scream into the ether about what you, the fans, and you, the gamers, have done to them and their industry. Welcome back to Words of Paradise, I'm your host, Leon Idol, and get this, from IGN, of course IGN taking the side of the developers, because when's the last time they ever took the side of the paying customers, at the Game Developers Conference, the games industry really needed a good scream. Guys, we're, we're gonna get into this article. Before we do, hit that subscribe button. I'm a nerdy news channel. I cover nerdy news every day. And let's be real, all this week, pretty much gonna be GDC stuff, the Game Developers Conference, because there is so much to talk about, including them blaming you for the reason that their industry is failing. They, they do not have the mental or emotional wherewithal to acknowledge Maybe we're the problem. Maybe the demands from our higher-ups are the problem. Maybe a forced change of the digital landscape is the problem. Nah, let's blame the people that pay, or in this case, don't pay, for our products. Over 50 developers met today for a coordinated group scream to lament the state of the industry. I, I, again, this, this is not to, you know, say that people can't be upset at the state of their industry or they can't be frustrated about what's going on, but when you direct your frustrations at the individuals who should be the paying customers, the individuals that you are not winning over with your modern day development tactics and, you know, more the DEI and modern day wokeism shoved into games that nearly the entire gaming space of actual gamers are turning against, yeah, obviously you're going to have a bit of a bad time, and we got to make fun of these weaklings because if they're so weak that they need to just go outside the conference, 50 of them, and scream into the void, well then maybe there's hope that they'll just up and quit because they can't take it anymore, and some individuals with some actual thick skin and a good head on their shoulders will come in and start making these games. So hit that subscribe button, let's go through this article. Today, over 50 game developers met in a park across the street from Moscow Center where the annual Game Developers Conference was taking place. They had one objective to scream as loud as possible imagine if they put all this effort all the effort to scream about their frustrations of the industry into making actual good games that people want to enjoy not your average forespoken not your suicide squad kills the justice league but games that people want and love if they put all that effort and energy into that like they did this scream Maybe there actually wouldn't be any sort of issues with the game development side of things. Maybe there wouldn't be an impending industry crash, but I know that's asking quite a bit from these individuals. The event, known as GDS Scream, took place in an open area in the middle of Yerba Buena Gardens, where event organizers assembled the crowd by holding up pieces of paper with Scream scribbled on them. One of the organizers wore a shirt printed with Munch's The Scream, another participant wore a shirt printed with an ice cream cone, and at exactly noon, the cluster of individuals from all corners of game development let loose a loud scream that lasted for several seconds and as it trailed off the group broke in to relieve laughter and applause before slowly dispersing. I gotta say, I'm glad they took the moment to applaud themselves, to pat themselves on the back and just laugh about the fact that, oh look at us, we all got to vent our frustrations that we, you know, together that we have brought on the gaming space, that we have brought on the industry and on of course to the paying customer. Applaud us, we did so good yelling into the void it meant so much for like why would you applaud yourselves I, I get it other people say pat yourself on the back hey give yourself a round of applause usually someone is telling you to do that when you've done a good thing you don't just automatically give yourself a round of applause and while I know it's not really that big a deal in the grand scheme of things like this is real more just like funny hokey this this definitely isn't important as the other stuff I've been coming when uh, covering when it comes to the GDC but I really do think that this shows the level of narcissism, this shows the level of self-aggrandizement that's going on behind the scenes of the video game industry, not just in the consulting spaces like Sweet Baby Inc., but your average everyday actual developers that think that they're just oh so important, as if not everybody can learn to code, when in all reality, it's the easiest time it's ever been to learn to code. We're seeing a massive influx and rise in the indie gaming scene for a reason. Hell, a lot of indie games nowadays are outselling big AAA titles. You wanna know why? Because these individuals actually retain their passion, they love what they're doing, and they don't feel harbored by the individuals at the gaming space at these large companies that are forcing them to do something that they don't want to do, or forcing them to do something that they know in their heart of hearts isn't going to sell, even if they believe in the ideology behind it. So yeah, when you see these narcissists applauding themselves after screaming at the sky, it kind of makes you like, like, you just, you want them to be so weak and broken that they just up and quit. It would actually be doing the industry a definite service. It might be the only service they've done the industry in the last, I don't know, decade or so. 
Scream was organized by Scott John Siegel and Carol Shaw, which, by the way, I looked up. Carol is a, is a dude. I, I, I never, that, or, or maybe Carol is just a really, really masculine looking female. I'm, I'm not sure with. I, just, I saw the name Carol and thought, huh, that's an odd spelling. Anyway, just throwing that one out there. Carol Shaw, in response to growing discontent among game developers in the face of ongoing industry mass layoffs. And again, I get it. The, the industry, the layoffs start happening, you're all, you're indecisive, you don't know what's coming, and I totally get wanting to scream and vent your frustration. But that just shows you haven't thought, why are the layoffs happening? You want to know how I know they haven't thought about why are the layoffs happening? Because over 15% of all the panels at the GDC this year are about some form of identity politics, DEI, wokeism, anything to do with that. So if you're going to have 15% of all your panels at the GDC focus on that sort of thing, the things that the gamers are very vocally upset about that you just want to pretend is a small minority, that you just want to pretend is a contingent of angry white men on X when you know that's not the case, or if you don't know, it goes to show you are not paying attention. Yes, you are having mass layoffs. You're having mass layoffs because you are not appealing to the customers. Whose fault is that? It's not the customer's fault, so you need to either blame yourselves or blame the higher-ups that are forcing you to make these decisions. But that's not what you do. Again, you wouldn't be giving yourself you know, a round of applause if you were blaming the right folk. So yeah, as well as coordinated harassment campaigns against marginalized individuals and overall fears of worsening industry conditions. You're screaming at the sky because of harassment campaigns against marginalized individuals that never happened. Show me a single, and ever since Gamergate 2 started, show me a single harassment campaign against a marginalized individual. There hasn't been one. There hasn't been a single harassment campaign, period, let alone against a marginalized individual. And I get it. You know, Kotaku, The Verge, all these other individuals, these outlets, IGN as well, would say, well, the harassment campaign against Sweet Baby Inc. Well, hold on. First of all, there was not a harassment campaign against Sweet Baby Inc., but let's roll with your narrative. Let's say there was one. That's not against a marginalized individual. That's against a corporate, a corporation, a company. And used to, used to the left, you know, the individual on the left back in 2012, 28, you know, they would be all for denouncing these sorts of corporate greed, corporate corporations that are doing nothing to add to the space and are only stealing from the working class. But again, that just goes to show how the left has irreparably changed. I spoke with Siegel post Scream, where they told me the event came together after they posted half jokingly on Facebook about the general powerlessness they felt about it all, and wanting to get everyone together to scream. Shaw reached, uh, reached out upon seeing the post and seriously offered to help organize it. Imagine you've got a five-day conference about how to make video games better, about how to improve your craft, your art form in making video games, and you spend part of that time organizing a 50-person public scream in the park across the street where people wear ice cream t-shirts. No wonder Suicide Squad is a piece of shit regardless of Sweet Baby Inc.'s involvement. If that's where all your efforts go into. The two set up event pages and used word of mouth to get the information out. Seal says their hope was to get enough people to attend so everyone would have a moment of feeling good, a moment of camaraderie, and a moment of just fully acknowledging how messed up everything us and acknowledging that we're probably supposed to be how messed up everything is, just throwing that out there, how messed up everything us and acknowledging that we're all here in this event of pretending everything is fine. It can't be a constant topic of conversation, but it feels like there just needs to be one moment of just letting it out. You know, again, I, I, I completely appreciate you wanting to vent your frustrations. That is what we do. That's what I'm doing right now. That's what all of us who cover this sort of thing on a daily basis or weekly basis or whatever it is on YouTube, that is exactly what we are doing. Venting our frustrations because we love games. And I know a lot of these developers probably do love games as well. But do they love games the way we love games? Do they love games more than they love their political ideology that is being forcefully injected into every single one of these modern AAA titles that are leading to the downfall of the system, they're leading to the downfall of the industry because nobody's buying them, because everybody the world over, regardless of race, creed, religion, color, whatever it may be, is rejecting this ideology. And if they don't love games like that, if they don't love games like we love games, that we're trying to force this out, then I'm sorry you ain't earned the right to vent because you are actually actively doing this. We, we are the ones that are taking the hit for it. We, the gamers, do not get to buy and enjoy the games because you are ruining them. So what do you have to be frustrated about aside from your own shortcomings, your own failings, and then of course your own inability to make money because we, the consumer, we, the customer, are not paying for your crap. I get it. You're frustrated, but you did this to yourselves. 
They can't- oh my goodness. I asked Siegel why they personally were screaming. Siegel replied, noting that while they had a very blessed 16-year career in games, they were struggling to recommend aspiring game developers to even enter the industry due to the current conditions, which they said was tragic. Well, good. If this individual can't recruit more ideologically driven morons to write some lines of code, then I'd say that's a win in the long term. I'm always slightly screaming inside for a lot of personal reasons, but this is an industry that's built on passion, they said. Yes, passion. Passion to indoctrinate the youth and change the world through your own ideological lens. That's not the sort of passion we gamers are looking for. I entered the games industry in my early 20s because I loved games so much and I found that I had this passion for building them and building experiences that brought delight to other people. It's an industry that really feeds on the passion and takes advantage of the passion and that's broken my heart over and over again and I just wanted to scream about it. And again, I can respect that. But also again, you did this to yourself. As I chatted with a number of other developers attending the scream, it seemed many of them had shown up for those exact reasons. I'm screaming because I was just re in a really good, valuable, much appreciated GDC session that I absolutely hated. One game developer who's asked to be anonymous told me, because we talked about diversity in games and we are all marginalized people here, the moment you say that you're a marginalized person, you lose all credibility. Because again, no one's coming after you because you're marginalized. No one's all like, what? Black people and women making games? Shut that shit down! Like, like, no, no, we don't give a fuck what you look like or what your gender is as long as you are not forcing ideological messages pertaining to that sort of thing into the games, which we all know you guys are doing. It's literally the entire point of that indie game validate that was made by somebody who worked for Sweet Baby Inc. You're trying to, and we see this happening on a much grander scale. Spider-Man 2 is incredibly, incredibly ideologically driven. Everywhere you go, there's a damn pride flag or some uh, bystander talking about how they're gay or whatnot. You playing as a deaf black girl in a Spider-Man game doing some graffiti and shit? Like, yeah, I, I get it. You might want to consider, so you, you, you can make the argument you're marginalized, which you're not, by the way, because the, the, in my opinion, there's no such thing, at least in America, where everybody has equal rights under the law. There's no such thing as uh, systemic marginal, uh, marginalization. But you know what? Mo the moment you call yourself a marginalized person, we do not care about what you have to say because that shows that you think of yourself as a different status. You do not think of yourself as an equal. And why should we partake in your victim mentality? All these individuals making these games, they've got victim mentality. I want these individuals to have the champion mentality, to have a winner's mentality. Be like, we're going to go out there. We're going to make the best goddamn game we can make. These players are going to buy it. These players are going to love it. You want to know why? Because I'm great at my job. Why am I great at my job? Because I took college courses. Because I worked my ass off. Because I learned to code by the time I was eight years old and I'm the best goddamn coder in this entire company and you want to know what I'm gonna go fuck if it's a white person that says it or a black person that says it or a male or a female or an Asian or whatever as long as someone's got that go get a winner attitude then by all means that's what I want to see in the gaming industry I don't want to hear a damn thing about your race or your religion or whatever because it doesn't matter as long as you've got that winning personality and that's what makes this individual the one saying because we're all marginalized people a loser but anyway, we're looking at each other going, yeah, it sucks. For some reason, we have to do this, and we cannot do it, and I just don't know how to deal with the obligation of having to do just because I'm the person that I am. What does that mean? Uh, absolute word salad. For, again, what a shock. At the end of the day, you guys know what's going on here. We can read the last couple articles, but it's what you think it is. Them blaming the consumers, them blaming the customers, them saying, oh, what was me, without a single individual thinking about, hey... Maybe the customers are pissed off for a reason. Maybe the game industry is failing for a reason. And it has nothing to do with the fact that people aren't, or I guess I shouldn't say it has nothing to do with the customers. It does have to do with the customers. Customers aren't being, are playing the games. But, but it's not their fault. It's the fault of the individuals at the top, the individuals at the upper echelon that are putting in these weird little rules and these DEI things. Or it might even be the fault of you in the middle management or whatever doing the coding. Because you might have these ideologies as well. So at the end of the day, no matter what, you shouldn't be blaming the customer. You you shouldn't be blaming the gamer. You shouldn't be blaming the fan. Wanna know why? Because we're the ones that keep the industry afloat. We're the ones that make sure you have jobs. So if you want to scream at the void and scream at the ether and turn your vocal cords to the zenith and then scream about us. Us. You don't deserve to be in this industry. But those are just my opinions. Let me know yours in the comments down below. Or let me know on X where you can find me at Bolt the Word. And please do subscribe. I'm a nerdy news channel. I cover nerdy news every day. I know this wasn't a breaking story, but it's just so important to get out there. Besides all the behind the door, you know, closed scene things. Besides the Sweet Baby Ink stuff. 
just how weak these people are, just how weak the people that are supposed to be making your strong characters and strong stories really are. And I wonder, are these the people you want making these stories when it seems like they can't even go get a cup of coffee without someone holding their damn hand? And if you're tired of this, hit that subscribe button, check me out on Instagram at words of paradise underscore Leon, become a member, join the Discord for $4.99 a month, you get to choose the articles I go over, or send me videos to watch in my live streams that I'll react to, I'll react to your requests, and of course use discount code VITALIDOL for some merch, get some money off merch, you get, you know, mugs, shirts, whatever it may be, I'd love to see you rep some words of paradise merch and until next time it's all here in the nerdosphere this has been words of paradise